I'm Hillary Hendershot, your host, and this is Profit Boss Radio, episode 140. Profit Boss Radio is your weekly wealth mastermind. Profit Boss is also a community and a movement for women who are ready to take control of their money, break the glass ceiling, and give ourselves permission to finally have enough. Want the secrets of wealth to be yours? This is the place. I'm Hillary Hendershot. I'm a certified financial planner running a leading advisory firm for women, and I'm sharing with you real stories from real life and real women who are making it happen. Forget Wall Street. Let's do this, ladies. Good morning, Profit Boss. Today, we are talking about the power of the seven steps to wealth framework. If you listen to episode 77 back 50 or so episodes ago, then you know what the seven steps to wealth are. So what I have to add for you today is actual client win story. So we're actually going to go through and talk about specific people that these steps made a massive, massive difference for in the 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience coaching program. You can walk yourself through these seven steps. I know that there are little clutches of women around the country who have formed masterminds who are working the seven steps. And so this should really propel you forward. I want to make this real for you. We learn through stories. Stories are critical to our success. And so I want you to hear yourself in what these women overcame. And I want you to take tips from today's talk. And you know, I've been talking about the 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience Coaching Program a lot. We have received dozens of applications and we are still accepting applications. I'm looking for 10 women to join the 2019 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience Cohort. And so if you're interested in more accountability, more coaching, more one-on-one work, having more of this be done for you, you can apply to be part of this year's cohort. And of course, there is an investment, a commitment, a financial cost to participate in this year's program. Jen and I are going to spend a massive amount of one-on-one time with you. We're dedicating three full days in the masterminds to you, actually four full days, including the very first training day. And we're giving you a lot of our intellectual capital and resources. We're spending a phone call per month with you. It really is a massive amount of customized attention. So there's a cost to the program. So, so far, the minimum, and as you'll hear throughout this episode, the minimum net worth increase we've produced with anyone who completed the program is $77,000. The cost to participate, the investment to participate in this program is $10,595. If you pay up front, you get a $595 discount, so it's $10,000 even, okay? Now, some of you heard that number and you're ready to turn the episode off. If you can't conceive of spending that much money, one of a couple things is going on. First of all, you just have a mind block about spending money. So you've decided that money is scarce. There isn't enough of it, certainly not for you. And so in order to hold on to it, you have to keep it. If that's the case, I want you to put another thinking cap on. Money is business. And in business, anytime there's an opportunity that has an ROI or a return on investment attached to it, you consider it. And in most cases, you take it. This opportunity most certainly has an ROI attached to it. Again, if the price is $10,000 and I hand you back over the course of 24 months, $77,000, I literally just gave you $67,000. So that's the minimum ROI. So far, the maximum ROI is $532,000. Definitely a worthwhile investment. So again, you've got your business thinking cap on. And if you believe, if you believe in me, if you believe in yourself, if you know you'll be coachable, there is a tremendous chance that this is a life altering opportunity. I say it's a life altering opportunity for you. A $77,000 net worth increase over 24 months, of course, translates to lots more money over the course of your life because we're increasing the trajectory that you're growing your net worth, giving you invaluable skills that you can use to continue to grow your net worth and move closer to financial freedom over time. But look, more importantly, how long has money been a thorn in your side? How long has this been a topic that dominates you or causes fear for you or anxiety that you fight with your partner about? 
Now is your time to claim your opportunity to absolutely transform the entire area of money in your life. This should be an area of life where you are empowered, where you feel joy, contentment, satisfaction, confidence. Can you imagine that? If you can't right now, but you want it and you know that you want it, listen to the rest of this episode, listen to the rest of this content and don't be afraid of the investment. As your wealth coach, I am reminding you, I myself as a business owner take lots of expensive opportunities because I believe and have turned those opportunities into a return on my investment. There are many, many things that are present in my career and my life that I absolutely would not have if it weren't for the coaching and consultation of experts and other people around me. I'm constantly being coached. I'm constantly having accountability coaches. I'm constantly taking opportunities to bring in new intellectual capital, new skill sets, new tactics into my life and my business. I try them out. I test them. If they work, I capitalize on them. And this is a great life skill. You take what works, be willing to pay for coaching and new opportunities. Find yourself a mentor in a topic, uh, in an area of life to take ground. Find yourself a mentor, learn everything that person is willing to teach you and then make it part of your life. And this is that opportunity. I definitely have a ton of professional integrity about who I'm accepting into the course. So if I accept you into the 50K Wealth Multiplier experience, I am saying to you, I believe I can make a massive, massive difference in your net worth. So let's do it. So listen, Listen, vision really is a powerful compass. All effective coaching starts with goals. And I'm totally committed to you having the opportunity to experience the freedom, choice, and dignity that wealth affords. There's a tremendous amount of wealth potential that I'm eager to help you tap into. So let's just do a little vision, a little envisioning for today. I know I don't normally do that, but take a second, just take a minute and imagine with me what your life could look like if you were free from the constraints you currently experience. What would be different for you? What would you eliminate? What does your ideal day look like? What life do you want to enter into after you achieve financial freedom? What do you wish you had more money to do, accomplish, or give away? This is your vision. And right now, this could be your moment. And all of us have a vision, but we get so busy just surviving every moment and doing, doing, doing that we don't pause long enough to adjust our lives or our finances to align with the vision we so desperately want. So let's make this a reality for you. What are the seven steps to wealth? What makes what we're about to discuss so effective in getting you to reach your financial potential is that it's a framework for success. Having guiding principles is a really powerful way to manifest results in your life. And I want you to have really simple and enduring ways to internalize the principles of a healthy financial life. See, every story of financial failure that you've ever heard can be attributed to failure to execute on one or more of these seven steps. And the thing about money is that all the seven steps are, are critical. Not doing one of them puts all the rest of them at risk. You can build your financial empire and lose it in a moment if you're not careful. So here's the real million dollar question. Why do smart, hardworking people who have the best of intentions fail to produce the financial results they want? Maybe some of you are listening, have that very question. Maybe you can't get your company profits to where you want them. Maybe you lost an unrecoverable amount of wealth in the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. Maybe money is so overwhelming and you can't get it organized or make sense of it. Maybe you live paycheck to paycheck and you can't figure out how to have there be more money left at the end of the month. If that's you, you're not alone. I've been hard at work trying to figure out the key to unlocking people's full wealth potential, as you know, if you listen to this show, including for myself. In the time we have together today for today's episode, I can't tell you my full financial story. It is in various places throughout the 140 episodes, almost 140 episodes of Profit Boss Radio. But suffice it to say, many years ago, I find my, I found myself in some very inauthentic financial patterns, including debts, and at one point, inability to pay them. Since then, I really have recovered fully. I've built a very successful and profitable business. And what I've discovered and really articulated for you is that if you want wealth and financial freedom and you don't have it yet, the way you think may be the very thing standing in your way. What I've learned is that you have to impact both your mindset and your behaviors at the same time. One isn't enough. 
You have to address your beliefs, organize your cash flow, manage spending and investing while at the same time experiencing support and accountability to have meaningful results. But for some of you who are listening, this feels out of reach. You're working hard. You're burning the candle at both ends. You're filling your calendar with everything you know how to do to increase revenues and profits or income. And you're still not sure whether it's enough. You get different advice from different people. You certainly read massively contradictory things in the media, and it's totally overwhelming to try to parse out what works and what doesn't. I completely get it. I mean, let's face it. The idea of balance seems like utopia. It's all on Instagram, right? (laughs) But in your life, it's nonsense. Give me a break. This is not a generalist's life. We all live the life of a specialist, especially if you are employed and trying to make money and be a parent or take care of someone else you care about. You got to run your business. You're a wife. You're a mom. You're a sister. You're a friend. And sometimes somehow you have to find time to sleep. It really does seem like there just aren't enough hours in the day and you really have sacrificed more than you ever set out to. Women do it all. And the always on nature of modern life leaves too many of us stressed, frayed, ineffective, worried about the future and underappreciated. So when you hardly have time for the urgent things, when exactly is the right time to sit down and create a plan for your money? Planning for your future is never urgent until it's too late, but I can help. And I know that you're up against a lot. Sometimes it probably feels like the deck is stacked against you in this perfect social media world. How can you be expected to have it all, do it all, and still be happy? We are nurturers, and sometimes we're naturally nurturers. And let's be honest, sometimes we do it out of obligation. So how do you step out of the role of taking care of other people to take care of yourself financially? Because in case you haven't noticed, nobody cares more about your money than you. And with very rare exception, nobody else is going to make sure you're on track for financial freedom. And who can you talk to about it? For the most part, amongst women, talking about money is still taboo. We talk about our kids. We talk about our businesses. We talk about love and life and sex and loss, but we don't talk about money. So how do you learn? And you do need to learn about it. You've heard the statistics that women live longer than men. So obviously, we're going to need to make sure we have the money to fund our longer lives. 72% of us will find ourselves widowed at some point or more in our lives. In other words, some of us will be widowed more than once. And that statistic, if you really let it sink in, is scary. But historically, we earn less and save less and avoid investing so that our money can make money for us. And what about that? What about investing? What an incredibly overwhelming undertaking that is. Every day, it seems like the media is screaming some contradictory advice at you, and it's impossible to know which advice to keep and which to toss. And if you go see a professional, most women feel that the financial services industry is totally out of touch with them. So many women I talk to leave their Wall Street financial advisor's office feeling talked over and talked down to. You really can't get a simple question like, Am I saving enough? Answered. So what are we to do? So listen, if this is your trap, if this is your current situation, I want you to know that reality can be different. More is possible. More peace, more contentedness, more confidence, more trust, more financial freedom. I see it all the time. And I've dedicated my life to making it possible for you. I've seen women overcome a broken past about money, bank foreclosure, and having to start over a credit score in the 400s, a painful and expensive divorce, having spent a lifetime letting someone else handle it, paralyzing fear of investing, chronic debting, and disorganization, and just flat out lack of motivation. And what's possible when you overcome these debilitating situations is pride, gratitude and confidence, being debt free, travel, peace of mind, fully funding the kids college tuition savings, a plan that gives each one of your dollars a job that gives you clarity, and it will take you from where you are now to where you want to go. You can be charitable, you can have money be an area of life that really works for you and you can have your money work for you. Sound good? I know it does. All right. 
Look, every journey starts somewhere. So for today's episode, we're going to review these seven steps to wealth with real life stories about how each one works to help you achieve real financial success. So when you have accountability, support, cash flow management, and trusted experts on your side, more is possible. And I'm going to show you exactly how much more is possible. C. As you already know, I'm running this 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience program. In 2018, we walked nine women through these very same steps in in an immersive seven-month coaching program. And today, again, I'm sharing real-life stories from them. And, And you can obviously follow these steps on your own too. So with money... Quick fixes don't work. We all know the stories of lottery winners and professional athletes who lose tens of millions of dollars. There's a quote from Jim Rohn that says, if you give someone a million dollars, you had better work to become a millionaire. Otherwise, you'll rid yourself of that money quickly through poverty thinking. So the idea of the 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience is that we work together intensively to impact your money psychology, show you how to organize money, how people who consistently make money investing do that and get you on a profitable trajectory. So the promise of this program is that you can increase your net worth by $50,000 in 24 months. So that's the ultimate result is the increase in your net worth. And ladies, it is all about net worth. Okay. After a 24 month period, we call that your wealth multiplier. So I'll be sharing participant stories and their wealth multiplier numbers. And that's what I consider to be the ultimate goal of the work we do together. All right, let's jump in. So the first step is to decide. Decide to be rich. Decide to do the things you have to do to achieve financial freedom. Everybody wants financial success, but too many of us haven't decided to follow the rules. We spend our lives resisting that it takes what it takes. It does take sacrifice. It does take trade-offs. You can have everything you want, just not all at one time. (laughs) It takes conscious planning and strategic action. And when you truly make a decision to do or accomplish something, your view is impacted. In fact, it's totally altered. And your actions in life are always correlated to your view. You all have this experience. You get a call from a friend on a Saturday morning and together you decide to attend a party that night. Your view of the weekend is now altered and your actions are correlated to looking your best at that party. Or your boyfriend asks you to move in with him in a city far away. Okay. First, you're in consideration. You're in wonder. You're weighing your options. But the minute you decide to move, your view and your actions both change. You start looking for a place to live. You start buying clothes appropriate for the weather there. You share your plans with friends and family members. You start looking for a job. Those are actions that ensue from your decision. So deciding changes everything. And that's why it's the first step to wealth. Let me share with you what I mean. Let's talk about Sarah. Uh, Obviously, the names that I'm going to share in today's episode are not their real names. Okay. Sarah worked with me last year and making the decision to be wealthy was the linchpin to her success. When the program started, she was resigned about her finances. She and her husband actually had a net worth over a million dollars. But what you need to realize is that he was ready to retire. So most of that savings is technically his. She's about 20 years younger than him. And they both agreed that they didn't have enough money to support both of them to stop working. So that's really easy to figure out. If you have a million dollars and it takes a hundred thousand dollars a year to live well, a million dollars is basically gone in 10 years. Okay. So they're both living into and creating a future where he's going to die before her, leaving her without enough money to live. So they were pretty resigned. The future looked bleak. So now once she made the decision to be wealthy, she saw lots of opportunities for new actions. She got right to work organizing the family finances. She got focused on thinking about how money was flowing in and flowing out. And she set to work giving every one of her dollars a job. She took on exercising delayed gratification. She reviewed all of their expenses um, in detail. Uh, their recurring expenses. And if you can believe it, she cut monthly expenses by $3,000 without impacting her quality of life, meaning she canceled subscriptions and memberships they weren't even using. Every time she found another thing to cut, she would post in the group. We had a private Facebook group and celebrate. So just to give you a sense of what $3,000 a month can do, if you save it and earn 8% on it for 10 years, 
that's $384,000 in savings. So she paid down her debt and she took on improving her credit score from 760 to 820. She made a project plan to apply for jobs that would pay her more and even considered starting a business. She ultimately did not get a new job, which means we did not impact her income. She automated her bill payments and that saved her time and stress. So Sarah's wealth multiplier is $163,187. That is massive given, again, she didn't get a new job. And that really is the power of making a decision. So look, where have you not decided to be wealthy? What are the actions that you're taking that don't align with net worth growth? Okay, step two is plan. To be honest with you, most people never accomplish this step. I could call it saving or I could call it spending less than you make. But those two things are just two sides of the same coin. Schwab recently reported that people with a written plan are 60% more likely to increase their retirement savings over time and 100% more likely to stick to their savings plan than those who don't write it down. Yet just 24% of Americans say they have a financial plan in writing. According to one Gallup poll, more Americans on average have played the lottery this year than created a financial plan. So sad. So of course, you know that you have to spend less than you make and it is like the law of gravity and it doesn't care how high your income is. Uh, I recommend you consider automating your cash flow. That's cash flow is literally the flow of money into and out of your accounts as you earn and spend it. Talked about that on the previous episode, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But essentially, you need a map for your money. Whether you automate or not, you're the one who configures all the obligations in your life, like rent, food, car, tuition for the kids, clothes, travel, gifts, and you get to say how much these expenses are. People who have a wealth plan spend less and save consistently. So let's talk about Layla. Layla's results truly demonstrate the power of having a written plan. She and her husband are very educated, super successful, both very smart, well compensated in the tech industry and had gotten themselves into a chronic habit of spending on credit cards and carrying balances. It got to the point where each dollar of debt repaid would simply be borrowed again the next month and they were totally overwhelmed. They couldn't use their money to move them closer to accomplishing the things that are important to them, like saving for retirement and funding their son's college education. So when we really made a plan for Layla and her husband, their financial experience was transformed. We worked with them as a couple. So Layla attended the mastermind events on her own. Those are women only. And the coaching calls included her husband. We were able to really identify and articulate both some things that had happened in their financial past that may have been holding them back and help them articulate their goals as a couple. So a lot of times couples get together and there's just financial clash because you haven't taken time to really formulate that partnership and decide as a, as a unit, as an entity, what's important to you. So we were able to transform their experience from overwhelm, confusion and overspending to clarity, power, planning, and saving. Those are the things they were doing by the end of the program. And Layla's wealth multiplier is $232,183. So they, and again, did, we didn't increase their income. Finally, they had true financial partnership. Again, alignment of goals and values, mindsets, and plans. They paid off $46,707 of debt in just six months. We were able to identify in Layla's 401k plan document, she's able to take a loan um, from her 401k savings. She used that loan to pay off the credit cards. Now, most cases, taking a loan from your 401k is a bad idea. But in this case, she already had the credit card debt so that the debt service, the interest that she was paying was going to the credit card companies. And now when she takes a loan from her 401k and pays off the credit cards, now she's paying interest to herself. So it really is a huge win. If you already have the debt, that's a time when taking a loan from your 401k is actually a justified exp a justified action. You just can't then go back into debt, okay? <laughs> the next step is speak. I could write an entire book on this one. You really do have money scripts that rule the day when it comes to your finances and scripts or what I call your money operating system limit what's possible in your life. Some of these scripts I'm sure you've heard are money doesn't grow on trees. There's never enough money. If I'm good, the universe will provide for me and money is evil. But money 
in reality is a blank slate and it can be imbued by you with any belief or truth that you take on. I'm not saying that it's easy to do. So if you have very disempowered financial scripts, you can't just stand in the mirror and say affirmations, but it absolutely can be changed through a combination of inquiry and committed action. When Danica started the program, she was living in the shadow of a painful and financially destructive divorce. She left that marriage with over $300,000 in credit card debt and had managed to continue living in Silicon Valley by sleeping on friends' couches and accepting free living situations with her three children. She was very entrenched in the story of herself as a survivor and a victim of her past, but she kept telling that story nearly a decade after the divorce occurred. She had to keep the emblems of victimhood present in her life. In other words, you're continuously telling your story to people, and by telling the story, you reinforce its power in your life. Where are you doing this about yourself with money? What is the story you tell yourself and other people about your power in your financial life? Begin to take a look at that as we go through Danica's story. How do you resonate? How do you relate to this? The narratives that you carry forward really impact how people see you and also your experience of life. And in Danica's case, her story of being someone who was overcoming something was preventing her from ever being empowered. So she had been building her business as a real estate agent. And when she started the program, she was on track to earn uh, $400,000 last year. But as the money would come in, her beliefs and identity had her spending every penny of it and more. She was paying for three kids to go to college with no help from her ex, paying their living expenses, leasing an expensive car and paying $4,000 a month in rent. So the money was coming in but it was all going back out and her debt was not decreasing. She was stuck. And then the light went on for Danica. It was absolutely transformational. She got that her story isn't static, but that it's fluid. She got the difference between what she was committed to and what she was saying to people. She took on speaking her new future into existence. So she went to friends and colleagues and she told them, I'm no longer a victim. The past is the past. It isn't the present and it's certainly not in my future anymore. Uh, she, she took responsibility for her reality. She shared that she wasn't committed to being disempowered. She told people she's committed to financial freedom and that she's going to get there and that things are going to change. And some people cheered her on. But you know what? Some of her so-called friends told her, no, you'll always be this way. And she thanked them for listening. <laughs> and pretty soon, I th- some of those people did fall out of her life, I think. And I- I'm sure some of you understand this process. When you shed the chains of the past, sometimes a few people in your life can't handle your progress. Sometimes they don't stay in your life. And that's okay. This might happen for you. It was really triumphant for Danica. She went uh, to her kids. She got real with them about what she could and could not afford. She was petrified that they believed what she had believed, what that she owed them all her money because of what they had survived in the past. But you know what they said? They said, we love you, mom. We never thought you owed us anything. So immediately the listings started coming in. Danica would show up for our mastermind meetings and tell us she had so much business that she she didn't know what to do with it. She declared herself a new version of herself. And whenever the old thoughts and patterns would show up, whenever that voice from the past, the disempowered money scripts would show up, she would say to that voice, thank you. You played your part. You did what you needed to do. I got this. So her fellow real estate agents were starting to see how many listings she had. The brokers started to call on her during staff meetings to share what had been working for her. The office was no longer taking care of her. She was starting to earn respect as a successful agent. And those so-called friends who didn't want to hear about her transformation didn't like it. But who needs friends like that, right? She paid off debt, including every penny she owed the IRS. Her CPA even negotiated $14,000 of IRS debt to $0 on her behalf. She opened a taxes savings account and saved 30% of all of her commissions into that account so she can pay her taxes easily. 
and she'll never be in debt to the IRS again. By the way, some of you who are listening just went into debt to the IRS. Okay, tax day just passed <laughs> and you're, you're, you're eagerly wanting to be out of debt. Yeah, you don't want to be in debt to the IRS. It's a bad entity to owe money to. She opened and fully funded a, an, a SEP IRA and she now has a rainy day account with $90,000 in it. And Danica's wealth multiplier is $567,751. That is not a joke. It is not a typo. $567,751. She <laughs> remember when I said she started the program, she was on track to make $400,000 last year. By the way, so she was on track to make 400, but she was spending something like 4 430 or 440 a year, right? And she had broke the payments for the program up into um, six different payments. And she actually struggled to make the first payment. She didn't even have cash flow to make that first payment. And, you know, she did make it and she did join the program and she did have this massive transformation. And um, by she finished 2018 with just under $850,000 of income. So that again, this program has nothing to do with how to be a good real estate agent and everything to do with the energy that Danica was putting out into the world and the confidence and intentionality with which she started approaching money. All right, the fourth step is ask. You have to ask for what you want. You can ask in a myriad of ways. You can ask for a deal or a discount or a raise or a client or a business partner or a loan or some seed capital, whatever you want. You rarely get it if you don't ask. And too often women are afraid to make powerful requests. Why don't you play a game to get a hundred no's? Depersonalize the rejection. It is not about you. What if you made 2019 the year you become an expert in making requests in such a way that people are compelled to say yes to you? You'd have to get a lot of no's to get there, wouldn't you? But you'd learn a ton in the process. So let's talk about Fiona. When Fiona joined the program, she really was frustrated with her work. She was paralyzed by fear when it came to investing. She is an optometrist by trade. She had been, she had been an employee of a retail optometry store, but that store made some management changes and she found herself the owner of that store. She had no experience as a business owner. She needed doctors to come work for her, but they kept telling her no. She found herself working all the shifts no one wanted, weeknights and holidays and weekends. She realized that as the business owner, she's actually the captain of the ship and she she needed to make powerful requests. So she took a look at the job posting that was bringing in doctors that she didn't want to work with. And together, we realized that it was kind of boring. It didn't actually describe what she wanted. So we rewrote it. This was her powerful ask. Great candidates started coming in for interviews. And Fiona realized that in order to make the profit she wanted, she had to add other items to her sale tickets. In the past, doctors she had hired had refused to be part of increasing the average ticket size. So she wrote the new job description to be very clear that she wanted to hire doctors who would work nights and weekends and partner with her to increase sales. For some of you listening, the idea of making a powerful, clear and detailed request like this is just out of the realm, right? This is a very powerful skill. And you know what? Fiona was able to find and hire some of those people. Also, for the first time in her marriage, she asked her husband to participate in retirement planning conversations with her. They made some critical decisions together that hadn't been addressed for years. She automated her finances. She installed a company retirement plan that would allow her to maximize her retirement savings. So because Fiona made powerful requests, she increased her business profits, had better f financial organization, and her wealth multiplier is $77,524. Okay, these are getting real for you, I hope. Step five is earn. Once you're conscious of the need to leverage and grow by asking, it really is natural to focus on ways to increase what you earn. The more money you have, the more money you save, and the more effective you are at building wealth. Yet in my conversations with women, I find that women hold themselves back. We say things like, I don't want to do it just for the money, or I feel uncomfortable charging for what I do, or I struggle to charge what I'm worth. But once you've cleaned up your relationship to money, you'll see clearly that you deserve financial success as much as anyone else in this world. And in order to have that, you have to pay for today and save for tomorrow. And you can earn enough to do both of those things. Now we're talking about Sophia. 
Two years ago, Sophia's family suffered a devastating event. Her father went in for routine surgery. The doctors made a mistake, nicked a nerve, left him incapacitated, and now he's in a nursing home. Her father had been an attorney. He was the primary family breadwinner. And when his income dried up, they discovered that their upper middle class life didn't have a proper foundation. It turns out her father wasn't saving much money. So not only did they have to deal with their grief about this man they loved so much, but because there was no money to support them, their lives were in upheaval. Sophia is in her early 30s, and she had been working as a therapist and living on her own in an apartment in Southern California. But the only way she had afforded that apartment is through a stipend her father sent every month. So the stipend stopped coming. She found herself in an apartment she couldn't afford for very long and really no vision for the future. So she really got committed to her relationship to money. And that's when she started her seven steps to wealth journey. She had been charging her patients on a sliding scale. And uh, two days a week, she'd been working at a low cost clinic for a low wage. She liked the security and having medical benefits. Her mother, who's also a therapist, was very outspoken about how Sophia should continue to do discounted and pro bono work. Sophia was really torn, but we really talked and Sophia really got that it's critical. If you want to make a difference in this world, if you want to help people, you have to help yourself first. Sophia didn't have enough at that time. So we needed to get her to a place where she had sufficiency, if not even abundance in her life so that she could make an even bigger and more valuable difference. She was really committed to having a life that works. It was very very hard for her to let go of the security of that clinic job. So together we did the math of what uh, the life that she wanted would cost. So we got really clear that, um, that at $125 an hour and working 30 sessions a week, she could live a comfortable life, save for a house and for retirement. So I encouraged her to raise her minimum hourly rate to $125. And so she got really motivated. She ultimately left that clinic job because she needed those days to fill her time with more profitable patients. By the time she was done, so she started earning more money and she found she really liked it and was like, oh, I have money that I earned <laughs> and it's actually nice to have money. And she she got really engaged in the process of being like being financially successful. So she actually took that $125 minimum and kind of blew it out the water. By the end of the program, she was earning $225 for at least half her sessions. So she multiplied her income by a, almost 4x in less than six months. And her wealth multiplier is $77,180. Let's talk about another way that you can fulfill on this step called earn. We're going to talk about Nina. So when you take the reins, you might discover that you have the power to customize your life to your own commitments and values. Nina had been working at two hospitals as a nurse in Northern California, earning multiple six figures. She also had a passion based internet business that allowed her to share and teach uh, the things that she loved teaching about. During the program, she got pregnant with her second child and she found that she was starting to resent the job the long hours and other aspects of the job just she didn't have in her life what she wanted. So together, we calculated what her living expenses would be for her wealth to continue to grow quickly. She quit one nursing job. She moved from the Bay Area to a much lower cost of living area. She's actually able to fly to the Bay once a month. She works three or four shifts at her nursing job and spends the rest of the month running her internet-based business where she's earning scalable income, selling online courses, and raising her two gorgeous daughters. So Nina's wealth multiplier is $174,192. And she actually quit a job during the program. So again, you either have to raise the ceiling or lower the floor. And in this case, she dropped her living expenses by so much by leaving the San Francisco Bay Area that she was able to make a massive difference in her net worth. So it's totally viable to grow your net worth by lowering your expenses. <laughs> and she's really happy, by the way. 
Okay, the sixth step is invest. I can't talk much about investing、uh, in specifics on the podcast. The lawyers just won't let me do it. I am regulated by the federal government. What I can say, so you can't go out and buy anything or invest in anything based on anything I say. But let's just say, suffice it to say, once you're a client in the 50k wealth multiplier experience, I am able to provide education and training, valuable materials to help you understand what is the stock market. Why is it so misunderstood, and how you can make money in the stock market over the longest periods of time? So over your lifetime, you need an investment philosophy that you can hook your wagon to. That's going to carry you through the test of time. Okay, we've got many, many years, decades left to invest, and we need something that's going to work for us. I promise you, if you're listening and you have any trust in or faith in me, there are very well evidenced ways that you can. Can invest your money in very diversified portfolios and expect to earn what I'll refer to as world class returns. If you invest in the global stock market, you get the returns of the global stock market. Now, the financial news media is not motivated to share these things with you.、Uh, Wall Street is not motivated to share these things with you because we're taking away their profits. So that sounds good to me. You just have to make sure you get the right education and training about it. I promise you, I will leave you with this about the invest step. You really do need to get to put those dollars to work for you. Investing in a diversified stock portfolio can be truly, truly passive. Growth, passive income. You're not doing anything to it. It's not taking your action or your time or your resources. It doesn't put you in any legal liability, which cannot be said for most other kinds of investments. And I've said this before, but the stock market really is the greatest creator of individual wealth in human history. And my mission on Profit Boss Radio is to get you, my listeners, connected with great ways to invest, so that women are finally empowered to earn compound returns, to have your money be making money for you. It's in this way that you can grow your wealth and expect to achieve and continue to stay in financial independence. Right? Imagine if you stop working and then you run out of money, and now you have to go earn. Back that money that you worked so hard for. Let's not have that happen. So we need to invest in ways that make sense and that allow you to plan for the future. So in the 50k wealth multiplier experience, you'll get fully trained and educated on these methods. The coaching contract, by the way, is totally separate from a financial planning contract. So I'm not talking about being your financial planner. I'm being your financial educator. Many of the folks in the program decided to come on board as clients, but that's not the point. The point is they're empowered to make that choice, and they understand why you get so many mixed messages out there. Okay, that's invest. You got to invest. That's step six. Step seven is protect. Once you've built your wealth, you have to protect it. Build a moat around it. We all know someone who's lost a fortune, but you put specific things in place to ensure that that same thing doesn't happen to you. I have this、uh, slide deck that I put together for a talk I did recently in Seattle, and I had received a almost four hundred thousand dollar medical bill from Stanford Children's Hospital, and then at the bottom it says, "Please pay today two hundred and fifty dollars." It's like. Oh yes, I will gladly pay two hundred and fifty dollars on a three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar medical bill, right? And that's the power of having insurance. So having medical insurance, having homeowners insurance, renters insurance, auto insurance. Many of you need an umbrella policy. If your parents, you need a term life insurance policy. So you got to protect yourself by not doing stupid things with your money. Including, don't loan out amounts that you can't afford to lose. Don't invest in your sister's husband's restaurant, and you've got to have insurance. Okay, so protect the wealth that you've built. And by the way, getting involved in the right investment portfolio is a part of the protect step. Because if you own just three or four stocks, and all those four companies go out of business or lose ninety percent of their value, you have lost your hard-earned money. Okay, so. Again, all these steps are interrelated. So those are the seven steps to wealth. So are you going to be successful? That's really the question, right? You're no stranger to setting goals and fulfilling on them. If you're listening to this, you know what it's like to defy the odds and exceed expectations and do more than others thought was possible. But here's the thing: 
when it comes to money, you really don't have to tackle it alone. In fact, study after study have found that women do better in supportive and collaborative environments. That is why I created the 50K program as a mastermind experience. You will have consistent interaction with the nine other women in the program. You'll get a private discussion group or thread. There will be monthly Zoom calls. So you see each other in video and we get together in person three times in my office in San Jose. If you're listening and now just is not the right time for the 50K Wealth Multiplier experience in your life, there are women all around you. Your financial success isn't just about having capital A accountability. Yeah, accountability is wonderful and discipline is wonderful, but it's more than that. It's working through your financial life in a way that gives you the freedom to explore why you think, feel, and act in a certain way with your finances in the first place. It's about being supported, encouraged, and empowered to make really prosperous decisions and make them unapologetically. So will you be successful? There's only one right answer because all of you have the potential to overcome what is holding you back from living a life of abundance and financial independence. But I don't think it's as fulfilling if you try to transform your financial life alone. The seven steps to wealth is a journey that I intended for women to take together in collective groups where we can impact each other's mindsets. Okay. So if you're listening Take a new action based on listening to this episode. Listening to Profit Boss Radio is great, but if you want to impact your financial life, you have to take new actions. Here's a quote from Oprah Winfrey that I love. Step out of the history that's holding you back. Step into the new story you're willing to create. So what history or story are you stepping out of that's holding you back? And what's the new story that you're willing to create? I would love if you would email me your new money story, your new financial life story at media at hillaryhendershot.com. If you're interested in applying for and being in the 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience, if the numbers and stories and framework that I've shared with you today seems like the right path for you, just head over to the show notes for today's episode at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 140. Or just go to 50kwealthmultiplierexperience.com and submit your application. So we'll have the link. You can find the application in both of those places, hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 140, or just go right to the 50K Wealth Multiplier Experience website at 50K wealthmultiplier.com. I can't wait to hear from you. I hope this has been valuable and I look forward to seeing you next week. Mm-hmm.